persistence and also allow them then to focus on uh, being able to get there, out there on a weekend and, and play footy to the best that they're capable of mm. at that point in time. And, um, yeah, Part but it's of it is actually being aware that a, an individual's got issues when he might necessarily not come to you. It's, yeah, that's right. You're, and, and, you're, you're confident you've got people within the playing group that if there's something going on like that, we get, become aware of it enough to try and help. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and particularly particularly the one with the, with the young guys, but sometimes there'll be family issues that they don't even want to share yes. necessarily with. The, and, you know, we've got a lot of interstate and country kids that, on, a, on a playing list, and sometimes there's just little, little things going on that they don't even want to particularly share with their... Uh, with their mates around the footy club, and because it's in a state and it's a, away from the the bubble of your mm. of your football club, you don't see it day to day. So they might just keep it to themselves for a time. But, um, and it's really it would really be if they are fortunate enough to be living with that person, they might notice or hear a phone call or um, understand that someone might mm. be a bit upset at, at different stages. But um, it's a, it's a difficult part of the, the management of your players, without a doubt. I don't think that's changed for, no, for no. even a day. But no. um, yeah, I think I think footy clubs now um, are as well equipped as they ever have been in terms of uh, support and for people to provide some sort of guidance. And, and they need it. You know, mm. it's such a it's such a demanding game with the scrutiny. Um, you know, the the increased professionalism just, of the just game. To ask you a question. I mean, your time in footy. Do you think the, the modern professional footballer is under more pressure emotionally because it's his job than maybe it used to be in the old part-time eras? That, that you know, relaxing, learning how to relax at times is one of the great challenges for them? Yeah, it is. And, uh, and that, um, yeah, that, that is guided and directed in a sense a lot by the leadership around the footy mm. club too. And uh, whether that's Jeff, whether it's myself, whether it's Stuart Fox, our CEO... Um, at different stages, um, including this week, you know, mm. I, I, we won a game in, against Port Adelaide on Monday, and uh, sorry, last uh, last Friday night, and um, you know we, we hadn't won in Adelaide. It's very, very difficult ground, but particularly we f found it very difficult to win there. So we just mm. should have been happy to get the points and move on. But you watch the tape, and um, yeah, I probably overanalyzed the game and, and was extremely critical of our players, particularly in the first half for mistakes that they made, but. Um, so even even as a leader of the club, in a sense, you know that that creates more anxiety about yeah. well, mm. and so you got to you've got to be very careful that you you find a balance because it's very very hard in in this game to find some space away from the game. It, um, you know, there's um, that not o not only is it uh, difficult just in terms of the training, the demands that are placed on them, but even when they get their day off, there's still connection through all the social mm. media and that sort of stuff that doesn't allow them to get away from the game in a sense. So um, it's, only, uh, it's only complicated further if, uh, if the leaders of the club even make it more anxious yeah. for them, which we're all guilty of from time to time and I've been guilty of it this week. Do you regard yourself as a stress carrier as a coach or you try to be the opposite, opposite of that and not, and not impose more? More stress. Where yeah, do you stand well, in that? Do you think? Well, well, this week I think I've imposed a little yeah. bit more stress because uh, we're just frustrated with the the manner in which we we played. Really pleased that we got got the result. Um, I think it's a, a horses for courses yeah. type of approach that that sometimes um, you you need to feel like we need to be shaken into into yeah. gear a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, yet yet other stages, you know. I, Early in the week, I was really concerned with the manner in which we we're playing, and I uh, was a little bit anxious about whether we'd ever start to recapture a consistent mm. four-quarter performance. Um, and then over two training sessions, Tuesday, Thursday, I couldn't have been more delighted with the mm. approach of the players and some of the plan that we've put in place for this week's game against St Kilda. So, um, you know, I'm feeling a lot more at ease, uh, even having not played another game since we played Port last Friday night. Um, and so it just it changes so quickly, the game, even within the dynamics of your own mm. footy club. Now, your captain, Luke Hodges, we know he's had the Achilles tendon issue in the pre-season. You know, he might not be 100% absolutely fit and match-hardened. Uh, is he confident he can get to that? Yeah, well, each, each week, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's recovering better from games and um, getting more training time each, each week. Um, I don't think any of us, particularly Hodgie, but also... Uh, the coaches didn't anticipate it was going to take so long to mm. actually um, get uh, get back into the groove of things again. Um, in the second half last week, he started to show some signs. He hasn't been 
Uh, it hasn't been terrible by any stretch. He's mm. still played in, uh, important and made important contributions for us throughout the course of those five games out of the six that he's played. But I suppose we keep comparing. You know, he's our mm. best and fairest winner last year. You always year compare by, players to their best, don't they? That's right. And he was our best and fairest winner by a long, long way. Uh, last year, and um, I suppose with that, the standard that he set last season, in actual fact, he set a pretty high standard in all his career, but particularly the last five years. Um, you just anticipate that you know he might have one or two quiet ones whilst he's getting his body right, but then he'll jump back into it. And it's just taken a bit slower, and that's frustrated him enormously because it, you know he's got the own standards that he set himself, and he knows he's not playing to the, those capabilities at this point in time. But I feel like it's only just around the corner, and certainly in terms of his Achilles, that's uh, that's improved now to the level. Is he getting on the field during the week? I mean, is he getting on yeah, the majority yeah, of your group yeah. training sessions? Early, early on, he wasn't. He was, yeah. he was perhaps only training half an hour a week for the um, for the first two or three weeks of the of the home and away season. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, he's done he's pr done probably eighty to ninety percent of the training program this week, mm -hmm. and uh, we feel he's not too far away from producing his best footy. There's another of the players that we love uh, watching, Cyril Riola. It's Dustin Martin, who's sort of just emerged second year at uh, Richmond, best second year player I've heard described. <laughs> Since we've got short memories, because Joel Selwood maybe 07, 08, and Cyril Rioli in 08, 09. I mean, just how good he was as a first year player. Yeah, let well, alone what he is in 2011. Yeah, and. Yeah, that's uh, that's also been. You know, we've had uh, we've had Hodge's um, inconsistent start to the year due to it, due to an Achilles, and um, Cyril hasn't played the uh, the last little bit. Um, so you know, we, we feel like there's some improvement in our group, but we obviously are a much much better mm. side when uh, when Junior's playing, and um, you know we'll miss him again this week, but mm. we're uh, we're certainly back for the Sydney game. He seems such a quiet, unassuming kid off the field, but when it's like when he goes out on the field, like an artist now, and he's got his canvas in front of him on the field, he really expresses himself and you know has a go at all the yeah, different aspects yeah, and, of the game. And we've had our uh, we've had our challenges in terms of where the best position for him to play. Obviously, um, he was pretty settled in 08, 09 because it, as he. Uh, became accustomed to the demands of mm. the game, which he coped very well with, I might add. But um, we mainly just played him um, in the in the forward fifty, mainly in the in his, mm. the first year, and he he did that really, really well. But over the course of the last eighteen months to two years, we've played him a little bit higher up the ground at different stages through the midfield, and uh, even earlier earlier in the year in the NAB, NAB Challenge series, we played him on a halfback flank, and he did some really, mm. really exciting things there. But um, we're just also mindful of the fact he's, uh, he's, he's had, since we've moved him higher up the ground, he's had three hamstring injuries too. And we, we actually need him, need him playing. He's such an electric, dynamic player that when mm. he's done those hamstring injuries,